right? Whereas if a card gets unbanned, there'd be like thousands and thousands of people building and testing decks and, and finding things that would be impossible for us to find in this brief period of time. But in a couple of matches, in a league, basically, you can get a sense of things and you can f find out things that you couldn't find out just by theory crafting. And I think that's the real the real benefit of jamming games. Yeah, exactly. Just actually make an informed opinion, especially when it's just been it's been like over six years since Birthing Pod was banned, even longer than Twin. Been a long time, yeah. It's my prediction that Pod is going to be a little too good in the very similar way that Twin was. There's just like so many new good tools for it, but I could end up being surprised like last time. T banning for the fifteen months. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah, I do think it's good to go into these things with, like, relatively low expectations or no expectations. Yeah, it's hard to... Mm, it's hard to come away for, with, uh, with too much from, like, <clears throat> just, like, a set of five matches. Yeah, especially, like, in our twin testing, I feel like there was a huge amount of variance in those games. We're we're gonna do five rounds on uh, five rounds on each pod. Caleb has a Kiki pod deck put together, and I've got um, Yogmoth pod. We're gonna do Caleb's first. He won the die roll again. Kind of seems like a good matchup for blue white control. Hard to say for sure. Okay. We're in pretty good position, I imagine. If Caleb If Caleb courts here, I'm probably gonna use Light control, so interactive. No twitch on screen. Uh that's not intentional. Yeah, sorry, I was uh I was recording my channel fireball video before. I had the wrong um Here. Ooh, resto. Pretty good. Yeah, I had the wrong uh layout up right up. So I might just have to verdict next turn. It's gonna be a slaughter of walls next turn. It's gonna get the scry two going. Then Caleb might overcommit into the second verdict. Never bottomed an Dark Mage's charm in my entire life. Not gonna start today. Did I tweet that I'm live about it? No. I mean, I tweeted that I was gonna be live at this time. Don't wanna spam people. Their list of decks I'm playing against. Um, I, I forgot to re add them to the stream decker, but it's blue white control, hammer time, rhinos, um, blue red, Ber blue red, burkt blue white control, rhinos, um, elementals, and let's can't remember the fourth deck. Hold on, fifth deck, blue white. Hammer, Elementals, Footfalls, Control. Okay, I guess that's that's just the five. I'm going to let this go, I think. I'm not going to pitch uh, Solitude here. Did I miss the Burning Pod stream? No, this is it right now. <laughs> We're playing against uh, Kiki Pod first. We're playing against Caleb right now. Just because there's not a Birthing Pod in play doesn't mean it's not a Birthing Pod stream. So I think I'm going to get my second fountain here. 
And then let's take our draw step. We have six mana right now. If we draw a land, it probably impacts my decisions, but I'm probably gonna be okay just taking five. I can also solitude here. Let's just pass. I think I, I think I'm kind of interested in trying to make Caleb commit a little more into the verdict. And then if Caleb doesn't, I can solitude the Omnath end of turn and then start attacking and getting some life back. Can we do an extra match of twin versus pod? Uh, yeah, people have been asking for that, but I feel like it's just like pretty. It would be it would be fun to do, right? It would be fun to play, but it would be pretty irrelevant, I think. Where, like, we're just trying to see like what pod would you know exist in this current metagame. Maybe if we have a little bit of extra time. Yesterday you were streaming it with Owen. Tomorrow cut off right then. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is what I was saying. Oops. I need to do like an ending screen so I make sure that I get all like my ending announcements together because sometimes things are a little finicky. All right, going for the combo. It's pretty bold, pretty bold. I think I should just counter and then untap in verdict. If I go for the solitude, I mean, I guess I could Dovin's Veto Ephemerate, but it is a little cold to Ephemerate. The solitude only for control decks. We can play it in tempo decks. Uh, I mean, not in, not in like what you're thinking of as tempo decks, but I, I've been playing solitude in a lot of different shells. Solitude is just a modern staple. Might not be good in every single meta game, but it, it's it's definitely good in this one. Still five cards left in hand over there. I mean, so we also have five cards, but we've got the uh, the Kahira. Uh, I would not recommend the Stoneforge package and Orzhov Reanimator. I know that a lot of people have the the burning desire to jam Stoneforge Mystic in every deck, but it, I don't think it's correct in in the in the Orzhov deck. In fact, like a lot of people have played Stoneforge Mystic in the Reanimator packages, and it's just it's just not good. <laughs> it's just not good. All right, feeling really good about our spot now. Taking the one. Yeah, this is maybe like a little bit of a spewed value, but uh, getting the solitude in play and just gaining three life a turn makes it really difficult for Caleb to, to tempo me out here. Uh, Caleb might have a restoration angel. Um, and if that's the case, I'll probably, I'll probably just solitude it. Could also, we'll see what we draw here. Another there's solitude of their own. I'll, I'll go ahead and counterspell the solitude. Stone Forge, you can have a home outside of Hammer Time. I've been playing a lot of Stoneforge Mystic in like artifact based mid range brews, both mono white and blue white. I've also been having like. Good success with just regular old blue white Stoneblade lately. Um, yeah, I think so. Stoneblade is like is is a fine card, but I don't think it's like a card that you really are, are super excited to have. Uh, just in any deck. Um, Chumper, think for two months, and it's not and like just like jamming it as like a pretty incohesive Plan B in Randomir doesn't make any sense to me either. Moss, give it 10 months. Appreciate ya. Okay, so are they going to play another copy of Solitude, which I don't have the ability to stop. But I can draw a Fun Raveler. I think I'm gonna go Fun Raveler. Bounce monitor pass probably. We'll see what we draw. Running a little light on <laughs> fetchable targets. Amplitude for the four months. Thank you so much. So Caleb's hand is corridor monitor three mystery cards. I'm gonna solitude the solitude uh, before damage is dealt probably. 
could also just let the Teferi die. I think Teferi die might be just be the lion. Has Pod hit the board? No, Pod hasn't even hit the stack yet. This is just game one, match one. Yeah, Caleb's playing Kiki Pod, and I'm playing. Uh, I'm going to be playing Yogmoth Pod after our five rounds. Yeah, with Caleb tanking this long, it's really not much of a sign of weakness here, so I think I'm not supposed to solitude the solitude. Can you get Caleb's list? Yeah, you can find. Uh, can someone get the. Do we still have the co streaming link? The, the multi Twitch thing? Can somebody uh, post that in chat? Maybe like post a link to Caleb's stream deck or whatever here. There's no way to make the clock infinite. Uh, I don't think so, but I mean, we each have 40 minutes on the clock. It's going to be more than enough. Okay, so I think I'm going to go Solitude the Corridor Monitor. Pretty happy to trade Solitude for Solitude. Is Ogbuff Pod the natural successor to Malira Pod? Um, I suppose. I mean, I, I think that Birthing Pod is going to be better in Yogmoth than in Kiki. Where it's just the, the creatures are, are, they're all already undying, you know? Just like the deck that's full of undying creatures and combos, it's just like, it's just so perfect. Gonna force negation this. One card left in hand for Caleb. Um, I should maybe upkeep Scry. Okay, it was a little late there. But I get to bounce my solitude. Another solitude, okay. Probably game winning draw there. Did I do any testing ahead of the stream? Uh yeah, no no, this this we're testing it now. Testing it now. Um, all right, let's get here into hands, get him with solitude. Smart to attack with the Zealous, the, the Zealous Conscript sent me in the Solitude at Teferi. So I think I'm just going to lose the Teferi so I can keep both uh, Solitudes in play. Morgan, thank you for the 13 months. But then we're attacking for, you know, 8 with our Elementals. I get to scry on upkeep here, get my last fetchable. Um, okay, I'll keep, I'll draw the Dovin's Veto this turn so I can go here with Veto up for like a Birthing Pod. And uh, then we can Delusion probably win the game. Morgan, think with 13. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't really feel like that comment needed to be deleted, but as far as like, I don't think a Ponder or Preordain Unbanned stream would be very interesting because the reality is when you play these kind of cards, uh, like the thing about Ponder and Preordain, the problem with these cards is that they just go in like so many decks. They go in like tw a dozen different decks and they re increase consistency and they diminish diversity, uh, but they are just cantrips. And so I don't I don't think playtesting a stream with them it would be very interesting at all. Uh, I don't think that they should be on bands, but I don't think that it's very good content for this kind of stream either. Bizarro, thank you for the 10 months. Appreciate you. I think Rockrick or Omnath deck holds up today's meta. I played a kind of somewhat updated version of that deck um, recently. Okay. My, Caleb might be more in it than I think. Yeah, I played a somewhat updated version of that deck recently, and I, I liked it. It felt pretty strong. I did end up losing a lot, but... Uh, I, I did re walk, remember walking away thinking the deck was pretty good. Gets Restoration Angel. Plays around the uh, 
the veto pretty well. Oh, sorry, the uh, ephemerate's exiled. Wow, what a turn. Really good turn, jeez. And then targets the Eternal Witness to get Kiki, probably? Yeah. Okay, so we've got Memory Deluge on top, and it shouldn't be that hard to find an answer to the Kiki. We could Brick. Okay, let's take... I might just take Charm Charm. Seems pretty good. Yeah, I also think that Jitte would be, like, somewhat fair, but it also, like, I think it just, it ends up punishing creature decks so much that, like, it's, it, like, Jitte is great against creature decks, it's not very good against non-creature decks, and in kind of the same way, like, Red and Six, Lava Dark, Plague Engineer do the same thing, and just having another effect like that in the format, I, I don't think is something I am that interested in, but, um, I guess that's, that's my whole point. No, Caleb's not playing a Yorion deck this time. Although I kind of feel like maybe he should be. Obviously a lot of different ways to build it. Right, let's get in with the Solitude. I'm pretty happy to trade it for Resto. Cool. Kind of feel like the trade was a little aggressive. Birthing pod, still banned. They'll take this trade too. Good hero, good solitude probably. Might see a concession in a second. Probably like probably kill probably take a draw step. Someone in autopilot mode here, having a hard time. I guess we could maybe deck ourselves. There we go. How's the pod testing? We're doing it right now. <laughs> we are currently doing it right now. This is match one, game one, and uh, birthing pod. You got counter spells, right? Yeah, I've got counter spells, and so I have one counter spell and a solitude. That's good enough. I just got like a couple fetches and a bird, so. Yeah, I think I still have two more counter spells in the deck too. Yep. <clears throat> yep. 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 Because we don't have a ton of cyborg cards for this matchup. Again, we were trying to build. Not a wild game. Yeah, that that was that turn where you got to go like rallier into into like four cards was crazy. I thought you were gonna come back. There were a few turns in the like early mid game where I think I could have stuck pot if I had gotten one too. Yeah, I, it, yeah, it feels like you didn't draw it for like the top like thirty something cards, right? Yeah, yeah, it was like the twenty seventh card or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, no deck text today. Let me actually turn off the channel points. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, I think I'm going to maybe play, like, the first Wear Tear over, like, the second Dovin's Veto and just submit this. Our game one matchup seems pretty good. But it probably gets better for Caleb post-board. How am I? Do you think modern is going to be some kind of legacy way? Uh, there are comparisons to make to legacy, but there's a lot of things that define legacy, like hyper efficient fast mana, and like wasteland and days and force of will, uh, Caracas, Bruchot and Port. Uh, that I don't think we'll, like th these are the kind of the cards that like really define legacy, and I don't expect them to ever be legal, like like the, the specifically the fast mana. Um, so I, I would say that. The, the f two formats are going to have different identities for forever, probably. 
this hand's not great. Uh, I might I might mulligan on the draw against Pod. Probably okay to keep. So let's let's keep it. Let's keep it. Spreading seas might end up disrupting mana a lot. Probably going after the Sacred Foundry. Might end up being better to go after the forest. All right, so if we play Teferi, that stops the Ephemerate from rebounding. Just gonna go to plus. Hmm. I can't Prismatic Ending Omnath. I'm gonna bounce my spreading seas. I think I'll target the green mana now. Double green's probably a bit more relevant. And then we're gonna lose the Teferi. I guess I'm gonna discard <laughs> uh, Mystic Gate. Could have maybe discarded the third Teferi Time Raveler though. We'll, we'll play some Fiddlebender tomorrow. Today we're just doing the uh, What If Birthing Pod is Unbanned stream test. <laughs> what do you think about Mangucci's reanimator? Um, I, I think I prefer my ver I, I, I definitely prefer my version at the moment, uh, but there's a lot of different ways to build it that's going to be viable at different times. But, you know, I'm, I'm coming off the challenge win on Saturday, and yesterday we were like, Five, we were 5-0 into, or 4-1 into 5-0 into 2-1 on yesterday's stream. Uh, I've just been, like, really crushing with the Ephemerate version. I think it's the best build at the moment. GG. GG. I'm surprised you didn't have anything there. I had Dovin's Veto in my hand, which is something that I'm kind of, like, struggling with. Like, how many non-creature counterspells do I need to play for pod versus... Uh, everything else. Oh yeah, that seems tough. I did have pod that game, but Which, I mean, that's you definitely got it, you a, got it. Yeah, it's always been a strength of the card. I think is that it like it fights so like the cards that are good against birthing pod are not good usually against the rest of your deck. Yeah, right. Yeah, one of the one of the th reasons that people said that pod might be okay is like force negation is now in the format, but now you're leaving in force negation against your opponent's deck that has twenty eight or what have you. You have a similar thing against Yawgmoth, right? Like, do you leave in Dovin's Veto against Yawgmoth? Probably. Yeah, you, yeah usually you leave in a little bit. But yeah, that's <laughs> that's definitely a big... a big uh, and, and like, a lot of times they cut Eldritch Evolutions against you, too. And so you only can counter Court of Calling. And, uh, and even then, they bring in a million Veil of Summers. It's a headache. Well, not your Force of Negationing Veil of Summer. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect solution. One thing I was also thinking is that Birthing Pod seems to be like particularly resilient to Prismatic Ending, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it, see it seems to be very resilient to that card. Alright, we're super duper ahead here. Um... I've got to be. I have to force this. I think. Pitching the hero doesn't feel that good, but keeping the memory delusion seems worth it. So I can actually do something with my mana this turn. Pod seems very weak to a deck like Rhinos. Uh, maybe we're gonna play. We're gonna play test Pod against Rhinos. We're gonna see. Also, I will say that like I think that like. This is worth testing the Kiki Pod variant. I think Yogmoth Pod is like is is the is the Pod variant that I'm scared of. You know, 
I'm not, I'm not like personally, okay, so let's, uh, I guess Solitude this this turn, and then follow up next turn with Jace plus Counterspell. I'm not, I'm not personally, I don't think that the Geeky Pod decks would be necessarily that powerful, but they are, they do seem worth testing. But the, the like, Yawgmoth specifically being already, already like a really underplayed deck, and a deck that's full of undying creatures for Birthing Pod, it seems like just such a huge up upgrade that I'm, I, I'm, I'm worried about that deck. Did I post the gauntlet? We posted them last week. It's uh, blue white control, blue red uh, Merc Tide, Hammer Time, Elementals. And I keep forgetting. So I keep forgetting another one. Oh, Rhinos, Rhinos. Things can get a little dicey if I miss my land here, though. I did, in fact, not miss the land. A link to the Kiki Pod. You can go to Caleb's channel for the Kiki Pod. I don't. I, I don't have a link to it. Maybe someone can, you know, post a link to it here if they, if uh, people keep asking. Why did I cast that main phase? Uh, it did a really. I, I should. I should have waited, but um, it was mostly laziness. Where I'm gonna. If if Caleb just goes to combat next turn and attacks, I'm gonna cast it before Caleb does anything. So I'm mostly just trying to speed up the testing. Man, it feels good to have Jason play. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been so long. I guess I'm just gonna. I think I guess Caleb could have spell skited there, but it's not necessarily a super good thing to spell skite. I don't know. Game feels hard to lose from the spot. Which I, I built the, the Yogmoth version, which you can find in the stream decker, which we'll be playing next. Is Mari Commands or Colgon Command in any of the decks? Uh. For Zamari Command and Rhinos. Rocket, thank you for the subscription. Appreciate you. Oh, whoops, I forgot to. I forgot about the Birthing Pod. Or sorry, the Spell Skite. Should be fine. White test versus blue white control, crying emoji. I mean, blue white control is a super relevant deck in the format at the moment. We, we have more decks we're playing against. Well, blue white control is one of the most relevant decks in the format right now. It may not be the most fun, but it is maybe the most relevant. I've got two counter spells. I don't know if that uh, matters. Yeah, that's going to be good. I have a quarter Monday. Yeah, that one's probably not quite getting there. It, I think it's like better for us to play like all at once and form opinions and then do the other one. Interesting. On the draw, what you do. We actually have a turn one mana dork. Yeah, but I, I think it's generally better to do them all at once. But if you can't see the whole stream, these will be up on YouTube, or you can watch the VOD if you don't want to wait for the upload. I think with IRL tournaments are back, prices of some cards can be a little less expensive. Uh, paper tournaments being back make ten, will make paper prices more expensive. Uh, the, the supply is not increasing. I'm trying to focus on this right now, Ironworks. Trying to focus on... Oh, sorry, I'm not muted. You're good. Uh, like yeah, it, it, the supply is not increased, demand is increased, which makes paper prices more expensive when tournaments start to come back. Uh, am I supposed to kill the hierarch here? I think I'll show a little bit of mercy and just put a million points of power to play. One of the choices to use traditional rhinos rather than your rhinos isn't consistent, but but letters better. Uh, mostly mostly laziness. Your rhino your rhinos is better. It's also over by rental limit, and we're just kind of trying to test it against like a more generic 
uh, field, you know what I mean? But we, 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 we maybe should have done that instead, but it's over my rental limit, and it's just like one match. Sorry, Caleb. It's not okay. I don't <laughs> forgive you. Oh, wait, that would be the BM. I had Violet Outburst. <laughs> no, the BM. Don't tell him. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, can you blame me for just, like, zeroing in on the value play there? Just like, oh my gosh. Uh, I might play like two Birthing Pot or Blood Moons over the Spyros. <laughs> How was Pod felt? Uh, Pod lost to Blue White Control and is now da down a game against Rhinos. Kind of the same way Caleb's Twin List lost early last time. Um, I think I'll mulligan this. I, I, I hate mulliganing seven card gemstone cavern hands, but that hand I don't think quite did enough. I'll keep this one. Uh, let's put back the second. Let's put back the dead gun, actually. I'm pitching the fury. This hand's maybe a little loosey goosey. Awesome, Zaki. Yeah, I've been, I've been just loving that deck. Glad to hear you're having a good time. I can get basic island here because we brought in the blood moons. Really happy that Kale bled on a mana dork this game. Yeah, the, the yeah I, I just uh, recorded a video for Channel Fireball with it too. Maybe we could get some more insights on how to pilot it there. Um, I'll probably do a deck guide soon, but like, Minguchi did a deck guide for the rhinos for 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 reanimator pretty recently, so I don't want to. Uh, just have, like, too much content for one archetype on the CFB. How was Red Black matchup versus Esper Reanimator? Uh, it's close. Uh, with the main deck Voidwalkers, I'd probably put it towards Red Black, but it, it is definitely close. Are the Dawn Pod decks stock list? Uh, relatively stock, yeah, I'd say. I Maybe I should cast Borrower there. Um, yeah, they're they're pretty generic lists with the with the idea that we want to test more generic deck lists because we want to see um, if like birthing pod is would have like this warping effect where it would just like be too strong uh, in a oh, math is so good in a environment where you just like make no changes to a deck list or or if it's going to be you know underpowered even. All right, let's attack, and then I'm probably gonna go two damage to Omnath, make a treasure stomp Omnath. It's kind of a weird chump log. Right. I guess I probably should have attacked first. Yeah, apparently I just draw amazing whenever I play. Rhinos against Caleb. I mean, this, this game is pretty over. I, I'm going to do this in upkeep with uh, Force and the second bird spell up. kind of uninteresting or or like I'm not that interested in them or they like you just like can't build a deck around like ponder or preordain you know what I mean ghost why are you deleting all these messages about death right shaman and stuff I don't understand I'm even like talking about the the what other cards we could do and that five months appreciate you Yeah, the mods are drunk with power. All right, Wooded Foothills on top. Uh, I'm gonna need all your birthing pod. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is definitely something, just like all the main deck needles with Saga, definitely a big point against Pod's favor. Yeah, the old blind versus the Temple Garden. Very normal modern play. Yeah, I guess I, I was under the assumption that we both knew the matchup and this was going to be fine. I guess I probably should ask first. <laughs> no, I mean, we, we do, both do clearly know the matchup. It's just, right, uh, right. it's just funny. It's just like a little inbred. Yeah, for sure. But you have to assume if Pod were legal, then this would actually be a somewhat common play. I think you would hold the needle rather than like needle pod blind against the temple garden temple gardens he's playing a few different decks right yeah that's probably true which pile does cloud post fall, fall in uh probably not that interesting you just put cloud post in el jazzy tron probably draw a card Yeah, does anybody have a link to Caleb's deck list? You can maybe put it in the chat. Yeah, but I feel like if Cloud Post were in banned, you would just have Cloud Post, Glimmer Post, the Tron Lands, and Eldrazi Temple, and the Etron list, and it just wouldn't be that interesting, probably. And see, we find a hammer off the Smith. We don't. I can't attack with my smith this turn though, and then make a saga token on my opponent's turn to trigger the smiths, and then hammer the following turn, which might be a little too slow though. On topping with Omnath is very scary. Can definitely just uh just die here. Thank you, Telos. Yeah, it, it is true Deathrite Shaman died for Fetchland Sin. Hold on. Test, 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 test. Okay. Uh, it, it's also true that if... Um... Ghost, why are, you, why are you adding these as, as blocked uh, terms? Uh, can you undo that? I feel I feel like the ponder period during death right is like is good conversations to have. Um, but yeah, it's it's also true like death right shaman is like probably not even playable in a format with no fetch lands, and um, but there are a lot of there are other cards on the ban list that would would not be banned if fetch lands were were it never existed or not legal. Mystic Sanctuary, Archives Astrolabe, Uro, death right shaman. Omnath plus Storm of the Festival, maybe. Uh, I mean, Storm of the Festival being six mana is, I mean, it's a lot. And you always, whenever you're gonna, whenever you're casting a six mana spell in Modern, you always have to be asking yourself, it's like, is this better than Primeval Titan? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't like the stifling ban discussion during a ban card stream either. I don't know why. I don't know why like we're blocking those to permit those terms. So we need to re-add them. Main phase, Exile the Paladin. Smiths are getting pretty big, but it might not be enough here. I'm gonna grab a hammer and then sack the silent clearing. Play another Saga. Get in with the Smiths and the Construct. Maybe I should have moved the Shadow Spear over to the Construct. With regards to a 6 minutes spell better than Prime Time, do you think Prime Time stifles deck diversity among ramp decks? Uh, yeah, it definitely does. I don't think that's necessarily such a bad thing.
or like or how like how big a problem it is hard to quantify but yeah it definitely does Uh, currently, pod is 0-2. Uh, the Kiki pod list is 0-2. They've been pretty fast so far. I think it goes for the records. This is just lethal, right? Oh, no, the life gain off the Omnath. But I can grow this to 12-12. This is, this is still 16, so I don't need to do anything. So this is like Ephemerate. Oh boy. I do get to draw a card off this. Life total is getting real high. Dig Through Time would be a good one to try. I think Dig Through Time would just be definitely bad, right? Or sorry, sorry not, not bad. Too too good. It would be too good for, for Modern, in my opinion. Targets the Omnath. Let's me draw two. Concedes, okay. So we're gonna bring in the Hushbringer, the ending. Yeah, Grip was like two pods at the end there. It's brutal. The the good news is like if the needle wasn't there, then Pod would have done something. But like if Pod is in the metagame, then there are certainly more needles around, especially with yours of Saga decks. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's a huge negative point for Pod, uh, or like a huge balancing effect of Pod is that Saga does make a lot of the you know, main deck needle pretty common which which is not something i'd really evaluated until this match i actually might play like two thought seizes over the sentinels caleb okay i'll turn caleb down a little bit caleb uses a graveyard so much for turn two merc tie croak so i might compete with dig dig through time is a broken magic card dig through time is a broken magic card uh, it's like, it's like Hogak levels of broken, you know what I mean? Banned in Legacy for being too efficient, uh, in a format with Fetchlands and <laughs> Thought Scour. You know, it's definitely a little more, more balanced than Pioneer without those cards, but, yeah, like, yeah, Treasure Cruise is e more broken than Dig Through Time, too, but, like, let's, let's not, let's not pretend like Cruise and Dig Through Time are straight up broken magic cards that should have never been printed as is, you know what I mean? Let's not, let's not pretend like that's not... That after it, it that isn't somehow like the case now or not the case now. I feel like the keypad deck should have Court of Calling in it. Maybe there's a lot of different ways to build it. You could be like you probably have to be eighty cards if you play Cord. This hands like got to be a keep. Uh, how do we sequence it though? Probably turn one drum into Smith eight on turn two. Uh, I would think Dark Depths is way too strong for Modern in a format with Thespian Stage, Hex Mage, and No Wasteland. Yeah, I think I just want to play, wait one turn on the Saga here. Hmm. Close up the Cigar to Zay, but we also have Pure Steel Paladin here. But Caleb can chump block. I'll play out the Springleaf Drum too. Oh no. Whoops, forgot to equip. I <laughs> still forgot to equip. Oh my gosh. Wait, what's happening here? It's playing way too fast. 
But you guys, these these are like stuck in attacking position. Is it like this on Caleb's side of the stream? I, I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing, Caleb, but my like Ingenious Smith and Midminer are stuck in attacking position. I don't know if it's just a visual bug or not. But I do not see that at all. Okay, it's probably not. Probably will go away when it goes back to my turn. <laughs> yeah, forever attacking. Restart. I think it'll be fine once it goes back to my turn, unless Caleb is like taking game actions that I can't see. Okay, well, yeah, this should be fine. Why no equip? I, I accidentally F6 through the, the turn there. Um, I, it was a mistake. I, I just didn't on accident. How was the birthing pod been so far? Uh, we've yet to see a single birthing pod activation. Uh, against blue-white control, it never resolved. Against rhinos, Caleb was dead too quickly. And here, I was able to needle at main deck. Um... So, yeah, it hasn't exactly done anything. What was the deck that got pod banned originally? Um, Malera pod was the most common pod variant, and we're going to be playing Yogmoth pod, which is kind of the evolution of that deck, and then also Kiki pod was pretty popular. But, um... Also, like, Siege Rhino and Birthing Pod was pretty popular for a little while, <laughs> and people, like, always say that that was, the, that was what did it, but I, I don't think that that's really true. Okay. So, Kale has to kill this at my instep, right? Kill the Saga at my instep. Otherwise, I get another activation. I guess it probably doesn't. Probably don't do that if. Um, ooh. All right, so I'm just gonna pass priority here. If I get priority back, I get to needle Kiki Jiki. Uh, we don't have Karmic Guide in any of the pod lists, but it, it is definitely true. Like. That is the kind of thing you'll see in these lists if Pod ever gets, uh, does get unbanned. Is like a lot, yeah, so much wiggle room for interesting cards like that. All right, so let's go equip onto Midmite. Kobe, five months, thank you. Oh, I forgot to tech with the construct. Sorry, I thought this was still summoning sick. Make a lot of mistakes here. But I thought about a similar thing with cards. I think it'd be printed into modern. That's actually uh, interesting. Um, we were talking about that with like we were talking about cards like that, like Dak Fade In uh, was was an example we had. I'll keep thinking about it. I want to hold the Midmite to trigger Ingenious Smith next turn. So it feel weird to be playing these stock meta decks? I mean, I've played them all before. Uh, it feels like a little weird to be playing them on stream. It honestly feels weirder to be doing like everything on mic, which is just very opposite of how I usually run the stream. Or we're, de we're dead, right? Unless Caleb has second resto in the hand. Do you have second resto in the hand? Nope. Probably the, I probably shouldn't have this prismatic ending in the deck, actually. You should have won that game? Uh, yeah, I should have. If I attack with the Construct, they have to jump another time there. Messed up a lot of turns there. Yeah, I, I think I think Jatay and Punishing Fire are boring cards to unban, where they're like 
I don't think they'll be too good, but they do restrict gameplay in what I would perceive to be an unhealthy way. Um, I think I'm going to keep this, and I think I'm supposed to bottom a saga. <sighs> bottom a saga, play saga on one. Then turn two, play Stoneforge Mystic. Turn three, get Springleaf Drum. Play Paladin. Maybe I'll just, no, maybe I'll bottom second Paladin. Let's do this. What are Burns' bad matchups in the meta? Uh, Reanimator is kind of like probably the big one. Yeah, the four color flicker deck's probably pretty bad too. I'm not remotely convinced up's a good for four, just could make good content. I don't think it would make interesting content at all, to be honest. I think it would be pretty boring. Just like, yep, Dubs is obviously too good. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to unban it. And then we spent uh, many hours <laughs> on this. Uh, I guess I'm getting second hammer now that I have a paladin in hand and another white source. Oof. Punished. I think it was probably fine to play it like this. Maybe not. Morning Caster said Burn is the worst matchup for Omnath Piles. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Okay, so let's play Stoneforge Mystic before the Hushbringer. Uh, this version isn't playing a cranial plating, although plating would be pretty good right now. I'm going to grab a Shadow Spear. Um... See how devastating Hushbringer is. Pod Twin and Green Sun. Yeah, I don't know. The thing about Green Sun Zenith is just like, there are fun Green Sun Zenith decks that would be maybe interesting for the format, but the best Green Sun Zenith deck would be Titan. <laughs> and I, 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 like, you could test it, but it's just like getting Dryad Arbor into Elvish Reclaimer, into Dryad Zeus, a Tracker, Titan, maybe like a Titania too. I just think it would be too good. And I don't think it I don't think it's that like even complicated. <laughs> yeah, and I also hate the idea of like banning a card so that you can unban a card. I think that that tends to be like really dumb. Oh boy. <laughs> Burn is a popular deck right now. Burn's been doing well in the challenges, yeah. I, I would I would definitely say Burn is a uh, somewhat popular deck at the moment. Alright, uh, Paladin is... Kind of the only good draw. Oh, boy. Um... I guess I'm not going to sack the clearing, so we don't really need to float the mana... I'll play at the Shadow Spear. Yeah, but, but Burn is a pretty good deck at the moment. I would say it's one of the better decks in the format. Yeah, yeah, this 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 is a Kiki Pod we're playing against right now. That's kind of flooding out a little bit. Okay, I was definitely hoping that I could get the Hushbringer back this turn. We'll settle for the Minmite, then we can Hushbringer plus Stoneforge Mystic next turn. Stoneforge Mystic first, of course. Assuming we're not dead. Okay, Solitude gets rid of Luris, but it's uh, not me being dead. Pure Steel Paladin? Any Pure Steel Paladins in the chat? I guess I'll save the Midmite to maybe trigger Ingenious Smith. All 
Alright, thought he was pretty dead draw, I guess. Can be good uh, on a future turn if I feel like Caleb top decked uh, like a Fibrate or Solitude or something. Probably not super beatable. I think I'm gonna start chump blocking the Solitude. I might triple block it next turn. But I don't really feel like this Ornithopter has much value. I guess the triple block isn't good against the Grudge. Okay, if we could draw Paladin, we can get out of this, potentially. Copium. Okay, so we go Paladin. Okay, we need to draw... So if we go Paladin, if we animate Nexus, they just kill, they just Ancient Grudge the Nexus, so I think I have to go... Hammer, draw a card. And I need to put both hammers on... The same. Cre oh no! I need, so I need to put it on the Stoneforge Mystic because I'll just uh, grudge the the mid might if we attack like this. Could be doing it. Our Shadow Spear is dead. Our Lurus is exiled, so it is going to be hard to like get through this wall of jump blockers. Good top deck. Still has the Ancient Grudge too. We need to draw our fourth Paladin. I can triple block. I think I'm just gonna take it. Can't you give the ink by flying it after coping? I didn't have enough mana. And they have Ancient Grudge for the Nexus. Oh, we bought him the fourth power to a Smith. That's pretty bad. All right, uh, I think I'm gonna start blocking. Let's, uh, I think we need to quadruple block. Otherwise the Grudge gets us here. Okay, it's actually very good. I don't love casting this here because, like, now Sigardizade is not, you know, doing anything, but I think growing the Smiths is necessary. And then if they attack with Knight of Autumn, I guess I Knight of Autumn block, or I try to Nexus block the Knight of Autumn. Oh yeah, we're also yeah, we're also just two mana away from the equip. Okay, I guess I need to actually kill this flyer then. Ooh. Clumsy, you need to stop spamming the chat. You're gonna get banned if you keep doing it. Last warning. Good game, good game. Yeah, GG's. It kind of felt like that whole match was decided by the hate cards, right? Like yeah, game one, sure. game one needling on pod, and then that game three, no pod just never showing up, just being a throwing haymakers back and forth. I got a little lucky that you didn't have another mana on your Luris turn to bring back Hushbringer. Yeah, I was really hoping for that. How's this like going? So Pod is currently one and two. We beat with uh, we won blue white control one. Hammer time like very decided or like, Rhinos very decidingly won, and then it was like kind of a close game three, uh, where Pod beat 
Uh, hammer time with the pod itself has not been super relevant. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna keep this. Yeah, I, I did. I definitely did make a lot of mistakes in like game two of the hammer time loss for sure. Killables to five here. Well, pop thing for Twitch Prime. Appreciate you. Well, you gotta heat the the bird on turn one when they mold a five, I think. All right, then we'll hold up counterspell, then go channeler, hold up counterspell. Uh. Chicken and ravioli ester, if you. But if you if you're feeling one of those more than the others, I don't have a strong preference. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I I have changed a couple of cards in the fiddlebender list. I expect to, I expect to stream it again tomorrow. So Caleb grabbed windswept teeth, which obviously implies that the hand is full of gas, including an ephemerate. Wow. Graveyard that, graveyard that, keep that one, and then let's go upkeep, heat the witness, or bolt the witness, graveyard, graveyard, draw, need a sorcery or artifact for delirium, we don't find it, I think I'm going to play a murktide, even though I could hold up the spell pierce for Birthing pot, I don't think I like really need to this turn. Curly pot is one and two. But I, I also think that uh I also think that personally the Yogmoth pod deck deck's gonna be more competitive. But we'll see. So I get to bring in Torpor Orb. Or tied too strong. Yeah, Mold to Five is also like I, I hate bowling to five against the, the the blue red deck. It just always feels like I lose. Yeah, I don't know. I've I've had like in the back of my head I'm not sure if I should be like more aggressively mulliganing to Breathing Pod. I wasn't trying to like mold for the turn two pod, but that was a hand that could actually do it. If the if the the way that this version of pod is like quote unquote like too scary because it can do the turn two pod, turn three kill thing, then I'm not, then I think I sh almost should be in these testing games, like mulling for that draw specifically to see if it does anything, to see if it's like in, consist in any way consistent at all. It might depend on the matchup. Like if you're like, I don't think mulling to the turn two pod is that effective against the deck like this, where I have eight one minute removal spells for the mana dork. Right, right, right. And I, and I wasn't, you know, yeah, I wasn't yeah, yeah, looking course, mulling for it, but I was like, okay, well at least I have it this time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to say for sure. It's also possible that you're supposed to be a, like a grindier version if like the faster combo builds aren't, uh, if, if the faster combo draws just aren't getting there. You could, may maybe it's better to be like 80 cards with Court of Calling and Yorion. <laughs> thought, thought, thought. I don't know if I was pressing the button right there. I think I, I think my finger slipped off the button to be honest. <laughs> but what's the pod sequence? Uh, so you can go turn one mana dork pod, turn two sack your mana dork into corridor monitor, untap birthing pod, sack birthing sack corridor monitor into rallier, get back uh, monitor, untap pod, sack um, the rallier to get restoration angel, untap pod, sack restoration angel, get kiki, kill you. And so you have you have you know you'll have the four mana you need to do it. It also costs you ten life though, or twelve life. Uh, no, ten, 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 ten. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Felder Guardian works too. Uh, I think I'll keep this hand. We're double channeler against a deck without a lot of removal is going to help me 
fight the flood if I just draw any spell. I'm trying to think if I should bolt the bird. <laughs> I know that I'm us I think I, I think I will here. Do I plan to play only modern in Vegas? I do plan on playing only modern, yeah. Well, I plan to play poker if I scrub out, but I'm not going to play the limited event. Oh boy. Let's go. I also I also need, don't know what I'm going to do where I didn't realize that the I thought that the modern started Friday. It actually starts or sorry, I thought it started Saturday, it starts Friday. So I need to figure out uh, if I'm going to need to change my flight or if I'm going to risk if I'm going to risk the 7:30 a.m. arrival time actually arriving on time. If it does if it does if, even if it's like an hour delay, I should be like fine, so I'm probably just going to risk it, but we'll see. I guess it depends on how much uh, it costs me to change it. Name drop my way into a buy. <laughs> Oh, should have played the land. Gotta respect the competitive integrity of the tournament. No, pot is not unbanned. Me and Caleb D are just doing a like a what if. What if it is unbanned? What would uh, the gameplay be like? Just trying to formulate an opinion. And then also like we rented the hotels for, we rented hotels for, uh, <laughs> you know, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Uh, so it'd be like, that's also the pain. And I don't. I don't know that I can get like a like an early morning Friday flight. I might be able to do that. Kind of funny that <laughs> endurance not having an ETB ability lets uh lets it kill the channeler here. Yeah, that is cute. Three war swears in t Texas. Yeah, it was, it stormed pretty bad last night. It's like a rainy day. La last night it was storming really bad. There was like crazy winds and it was pouring rain. And Athena wakes up and she's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. And I'm like, Athena, it's pouring outside. You don't want to go to the bathroom. And she's like, I gotta go. I'm sorry. And we like, we're like sprinting out into the rain and it's, it's raining sideways. And both of us are just soaked after being out there for like, we were only out there for like 30 seconds. Can't self endurance. There's a torpor orb in play. <laughs> Still. <laughs> we have a sort of cause light pride mage in this deck art for you. Oh, you're it's not muted, Caleb. Because the DCS to attack when I press the dashing ragavan. The problem with dashing ragavan is they just block the ragavan and then they block the DRC next turn. You talk with your doc? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's normal, but, like, Athena is, like, very good at communicating. <laughs> She's very good at, like, looking at me and, like, telling me exactly what I need to know. She's very, very good at communicating, which is a great feature to have in a dog. Some dogs are not very good at, like, <laughs> expressing what they need at all. But Athena is very, very good about that. Okay, so we can heat the Omnath. Gains four. Allows me to attack. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna put a wall into play. I don't get to draw a card, what a Nambo. All right, two birthing pods over there. Now I got a counter spell too. I think I'm supposed to just keep the charm as a counter spell here. Just like Caleb needs, well, just keeping up with the counter spell means Caleb needs multiple good top decks, and Caleb doesn't have that many good top decks when. We have the Ragavan going. 
I think I will go ahead and just get the 3 2 into play, though. Up to clock. When the pod deck with Arbor stop partying? Well, Dryad Arbor, like, really sucks to draw. <laughs> you ever draw on a Dryad Arbor? But yeah, I, I've got a Dryad Arbor in the Yawgmoth version. It's also, like, in the four color version. The Arbor is just really tough a lot of the time. Uh, this list has three counter spell, uh, four charm. I, I tried to like make this list a more generic version. You know what I mean, rather than necessarily the version I feel was best. I feel like. I feel like it ends up being better testing if it's um. If it's more of a stock list, right? No, we haven't played the pod deck yet, but we're going to play it um, after one more match with uh, against Caleb's deck. GG's. GG's indeed. Some pretty, some pretty good flood there. Yeah, people were suggesting maybe Dryad Arbor, but I feel like it's probably not worth it. Dryad Arbor really sucks to draw. It does really suck to draw. It was also like never played in a uh, in pod, right? Like it, I don't recall it being a, a big part of that deck. I looked at like a bunch of old pod lists, and I didn't see any anyway. Yeah, I don't see. I don't think so either. Although um, I had a friend who played like a really convoluted um, pod deck with that was also a twin deck, <laughs> and played Intruder Alarm, and you could um, you could it's you could. Uh, Put twin on dried ar arbor, and with uh, intruder alarm in play, you'd make infinite arbors. It was pretty bad. Yeah, I think the idea is that you draw more like more than five creatures in the first half of your deck. Yeah, for sure. And you just don't need the dried arbor. Yeah, the torpor orb also seems like really, really nasty. Yeah, I mean, I finally drew a dork to go get um, Outland Liberator on that last turn, but uh, just a little obviously that, that doesn't do it when I'm facing down lethal, right? Needed another another creature. Needed one more thing. Uh, this hand's, like, okay if we draw a land. Let's put this in the back. This hand's way, way better. Probably putting back... The flooded strand. I think I'm getting Temple Garden naming blue a sprawl, so I can cast a fairy if I draw it. Could maybe I put just put back the cavern too. So I can fury the hierarch here at a card parity because I have the Risen Reef. I think I'll wait a turn though. Get a little greedy. Thousand Year Elixir and the Fiddlebender deck. I'm, I'm not familiar with uh, with what that card does. If you want to type exclamation point card, Thousand Year Elixir though, I will uh, read it. So let's float a white mana in case we find Ephemerate. Did not find the Ephemerate. Alright, time to- we have to kill the Hierarch otherwise we could just die. And we're a little flooded here. At least we have Kihira. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as all those creatures had haste. Yeah, it doesn't seem particularly good. Seems very win more. It's a very expensive card too. Ooh, we drew the ephemerate. It's pretty good. Caleb does know about it though. Me and Caleb should magic box? I would do it. <laughs> I would definitely do it. Okay, so now I just, I, now I let the evoke trigger resolve, right? 
Should have done that first. What's the difference between Moto and Paper Modern Meta? There's no such thing as the Paper... Uh, there's no such thing as a defined Paper ma uh, Meta game right now. Uh, there, there. Maybe you could say that there was back when there were Paper tournaments across the country every weekend. That's just not the world we live in at the moment. It's not the world we're going to be living in anytime soon, I think. Um, a... Um, it, there are localized metagames that are usually like reflective of the Magic Online metagame to some extent, but because their sample size is smaller than the Magic Online metagame, they usually look a little different. And if you're experienced in your in local metagame, you'll be able to determine what those differences are. But for the, they're they're all reflections of the Magic Online meta because that's the only that's the only really defined metagame. Oh, right, Reef doesn't reveal. I was thinking that it does. Initial thoughts on Pod? Um, it hasn't seemed, honestly, or Caleb's version hasn't seemed as strong as I thought it would. It's a very small sample size to make any, like, sweeping decisions. But it hasn't, like, seemed like it's really going to end up being a problem. Um, that being said, I do think that the Yog I'm the Yogmoth variant that I'm going to play, I think, is the scarier of the two decks. Um, so I think I'm going to, in response to this, Solitude the Wall. And if Caleb ephemerates, I have the ephemerate rebound too. Zero life is gained. To attack for seven, play a second Risen Reef. I would play did you have a white card to pitch on your last turn? I did not know. I was just, the Solitude is my only spell. I misstacked my fucking triggers, obviously. Like, I have the Ephemerate then. Yeah, I kind of figured. Pretty feel bad. I think you probably win the game. If you stack the triggers differently, or maybe if you had to exile the reef first, but you probably didn't have any you didn't have any way to know how flooded I was. We couldn't cast the Teferi there, you didn't have the, the mana. Okay, um kinda of surprised to win game one here. Endurance does break up like the Renegade Rallyer plan. I feel like these prismatic endings are kind of not good in general, so I think I'm gonna cut those. Bring in the other elementals here. This deck could ending a pod. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Maybe I'm interested in like the first copy of prismatic ending, but like to very bouncing pod seems better. And end it like you know spinning four mana like prismatic ending on four is usually like something you have to do in some spots, but like it's always this card always shines more answering. In like one or two mana spells. Is killing the mana dorks not good enough? Well, the thing is, like, your man their mana dorks are already pretty vulnerable to, like, Fury specifically. And the man like, the endings don't line up well against, like, almost anything else in the deck besides the dorks. Mr. Doc, you get the four months. I could be misevaluating it, right? Obviously, first time playing this matchup exactly. Uh, I'll keep this. I don't think I'm gonna solitude the Hayek right now. I could key here here if I felt like I really needed to. That's a good draw. I should name white with this. Yeah, yeah I just think I just wanna name white and then get the Kihira. Next turn I get Omnath to Hardcast Drifter. Although I probably should have uh, not been F6 here. I'll just I'll just let this happen. It's fine, they can draw two.
Okay, nobody saw Caleb. I only have one ending in the deck. Although Caleb definitely has Solitude. Okay, Crisis averted. Um. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm definitely going to exile the Hierarch. If I sat, if I feel like I should Solitude this because they get to go. Caleb gets to go sack this, get Rally or get back Wall. I think it's just, I think that's just a bit too much value. Okay, so Endurance does break up my opponent's combo here. I'm just gonna hard cast Bull Drifter. Uh, so they're gonna sack the monitor, get back Rallier, then I've got the Endurance. And then we should be good for a turn at least, then we can bounce the pod. This, these are the exciting turns, right? Where you get to untap with Pod. Caleb bit missing as many land drops as he has has definitely been unfortunate, though. Okay, let's attack with the Drifter first, and then I think just Ephemerate the Drifter. All right. Maybe I should have cast this to Fairy first. Who's to say? I don't have double red here. We should have a turn to to reef. Pod in hand is pretty scary, of course. Um, I think I'm just gonna hard cast the Fury. And kill the Rallyer and the Birds of Paradise. How's Greentron? I feel like Greentron is pretty underplayed at the moment. I think it's actually like going to make a comeback in the next couple weeks. At least that would be my prediction. Yeah, like Tron is really good against Reanimator. It's really good against the value piles. Um, and like Merktide decks are kind of on the decline right now because of Solitude. Like in the, in the Solitude metagame, I think it makes a lot of sense to uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for Tron to come back. Bummer, bummer. Tron should play Urza Saga for reasons. I don't think Urza Saga is very good in Mono Green Tron, where it's like you basically always want to have Tron on turn three, turn four if you have to play a green source which you don't want to, and like I, I don't know when you're ever taking a turn off to like play Saga. Uh, I only have I I only have a uh, nine cyber cards because this deck was over my rental limit, uh, but the deck had four force mitigations in the sideboard, which I don't want to side in in this matchup, so I just like didn't rent them. What's the record so far? Pod is one and three. We're about to go to game three here. What the other two slots? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine is Kahira. Yeah, what are I don't know where the other two slots are actually. Sorry. Uh this hand's pretty good if we draw a land. I'm gonna mulligan. I think we've got better sixes. Alright, let's keep this one, put back endurance. And just pass on turn one. Caleb's also mulling to six.
D20 bandit to keep the three months. Higher card one. Grab the triome. Guess we ending this. Okay, pass back. It feels really miserable to be at like 13 life <laughs> when you haven't attacked me at all. Yeah, that's definitely something I've noticed about this version. The, the the painful mana base is definitely super real. Maybe not as relevant right now when there's very few red aggro decks in the format, but I'm curious to see like how like the two color version that we're playing next fares in, in contrast. Can I get basic forest here? So corridor monitor, untap pod. Right, so can you, I'm sorry, I can't eat this right now. No. No, I can't. I, I can eat it after the stream, though. Sorry. I didn't realize you'd have it ready so early. Plan to do more of these with other cards. And the thing about, like, the idea about, like, doing this with other cards, it's like... The, the cool thing about Twin and Pod is, like, the decks are completely built around them, and there's a lot of cool choices, and you do have, I think, a little more... Um, the, the gameplay is more interesting and like the results of your testing or whatever feel a bit more conclusive where just like adding like almost any other card that I think would be interesting off to, to do, to, to do almost any other card here. I think just, um, I guess I'm gonna take the re, a reef here. Yeah. Sorry. Doing, doing like any other card, it's good. The testing ends up being uh not that good where it's like ponder just kind of goes in a dozen different decks death right shaman goes in a ton of different decks and is just like a one mana one two value card um that yeah that, that's the problem is like there's just like too many generic value cards that like are like the rest of, i guess i don't think i want to attack the harbinger here into resto um that just i just don't think and make for very interesting uh games i guess i don't i guess i don't need to try so i can ephemerate the harbinger and then get a solitude and solitude here but resto doesn't do too much with pot and play because like the only five drop to get is you know, either either solitude or kiki and if they like resto to get solitude i'll just ephemerate the reef I walk through lives and having more life than the opponent. How detrimental do you think the life lost to pause to that? Uh, a non-zero amount of detrimental. We'll see. Uh, I'm also, you know, you would definitely you have ways to gain life in the deck. You have more value based lines. I think it'll ultimately probably be not that big a deal. Uh, or like maybe something you can calculate for. But a good question for sure. Okay. Guess we're gonna fury here. Yeah, so I, I don't I don't know that there's another good uh, card on the modern band list to test, so this might be the last one for a while. Uh, we, we, we've kind of talked it to death too, and in our like mini conversations we've had on this topic, I haven't had I haven't seen like a single suggestion that's made me change my mind. It's pretty good value. Yeah, Jitte is another one of those kind of boring cards where Jitte is probably... I don't think Jitte is too good, but I think Jitte leads to really bad gameplay, which is why I don't want to see it unbanned. It's, like, good against creature decks. It's not good against non-creature decks. It's just kind of boring. Yeah, testing KCI also sounds miserable because KCI is, like, so complicated. I, like... I, I feel like I learned how to play against it decently. I never learned really how to pilot it proficiently. 
Disciple of the Vault isn't banned, is it? I don't think Disciple of the Vault is banned. How has Pod been? It's been uh, medium so far. Um, but we're going to test in the Yawgmoth version in a second, uh, which is going to be, I think, the scarier of the two decks. Looking pretty strong here. <laughs> yeah, I, like, Preordain and Ponder, like, make almost, like, no sense to test. It's like, they just go in a dozen different decks, and the problem with those cards is reducing format diversity... And increasing dex consistency too much. Not so much uh, anything else there. Okay, so we get to show K let Caleb do his thing. He gets to sack the Rallier, get Restoration Angel, um, untap the pod, Kiki Jiki here. Yeah, Green uh, I think Green Sithius is also just definitely too good in Titan. It's just not that interesting either. There are definitely fun Green Sithius decks that exist, but they wouldn't be the broken ones. Okay, GG's. GG's. Thoughts at, least Pod did, at least Pod did something ever. Yeah, it, I mean, it, it definitely seems really good in those games where it's just sitting there and it turns any creature you draw into like this crazy, crazy uh, board state. Yeah, absolutely. Where do you that was that half of the gauntlet, right? Yeah, that was that was the whole half. What are your thoughts on your deck after playing it for five matches? Uh, it played out pretty smooth. I never really wanted the season pyromancer, but I'm not sure if I would have wanted the kitchen things that we cut at the last minute either. Yeah, I, I I've played a decent amount of Kiki Court lately, and I I've cut the season pyromancer from that deck where I found myself like never tutoring it, but I was usually like happy enough to draw it. I thought maybe it would be different in the pod shell. It, it might still be reasonable. I think something that would uh, help this deck, like the the matchups where we had like rougher times, um, like control and uh, and blue red, is cutting the ephemerates, which are really, like kind of like hard to not telegraph and easy for the opponent to respond to. Cut the ephemerates, cut the walls and stuff, and play like main deck to fairies and uh, and like voice of resurgence, which is really good against instant speed interaction. And voice hasn't seen play in modern in a while, so it, it I think it made sense to like cut it and do like more updated like more modern cards like solitude ephemerate it's a very modern thing to be doing right now right and, like a bunch of busted new cards but i think um i mean part of, part of that might be because pod hasn't seen play in, in modern in a while and voice is good in pod and like very specifically in those matchups that seemed the most difficult for the shell and then teferi's like obviously a great card so then we could like turn two birthing pod or turn two to fairy yeah, I, I agree with that. That's also, of course, like a huge strength to a card like Birthing Pod, a card like Twin, is that you just have almost unlimited ways to build the decks around it. Tons of different ways, yeah. And it's also like, we were talking about this in chat a lot. Uh I'm <laughs> sorry.